go south for the winter, you shouldn't have to keep making videos about how to stay warm in your RV. <laughs> new developments and new things that we're going to have to do that we haven't done before. Yeah, let's go down that road. Gary's topping off our propane tank. We have one full one and he's he's going to get this one filled so that we have two completely full propane tanks. Hello faithful people. I'm Orlean. Gary's uh, paying for the propane right now. Oh gosh. Okay, so there's some differences between this cold spell and the one we had in February of 21 when we were in Northeast Texas in Tyler. The difference is, is that when we were in Tyler, we were in a pretty protected RV park as far as wind and things like that go, but there wasn't a lot of wind. It was the ice and the snow and the sub-zero temperatures that was so bad. This time, we're in the wide open in a brand new RV park and we have very little protection and we're gonna still get down very close to zero. They're talking 11 degrees for a low. And the big thing is the wind. We're gonna have winds of about uh, anywhere from 25 to 35 miles an hour with wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour or more. We have to think of a few extra things or different things than the way we did it when uh, during Snowmageddon in uh, 2021. We're gonna have to figure out a way to put the tarp on so that it doesn't blow off or blow away. There's some things we don't wanna do that would could harm the finish on the RV. So we're gonna to go to Home Depot and see what we can find and get some ideas there. Before we show you what we ended up with getting, we're gonna tell you some ideas that other people have done that we saw on YouTube or RV forums, and that way maybe some of those will work for you as well. One of the ideas was foam board. That was a big one. Foam board, or some even have like a reflective thing on the outside of it. They put them up against the RV all the way around, and they have different ways of fastening them together. Some they just use duct tape and whatever. They just really box it all in. That works for some people. It did not work for us because we don't have anything to do with all that foam board afterwards. Mm -hmm. Our neighbor is doing it next door, and I would show it to you, but he is, um, we just met him yesterday. <laughs> and yeah. I don't want to bring my camera out to him, <laughs> you know, to film him. But um, he's doing it, and afterwards he's building a house, and he has a shed, and he's going to be using it in his shed when he's done. So that that was a very practical thing. But for us, it would not work. We would have no place to store it afterwards. Which means we'd have to throw it, and that wouldn't be good. No. <laughs> Another idea we saw were air skirts. Hmm. They're very pricey. Um, but they are easy to store. There are several of these big bags that you, they're heavy duty material and that comes with a pump and you pump them up and you stuff them underneath the, all the way around your RV. The problem for us was twofold. One, the price. <laughs> Two, was we wouldn't have a place to store them afterwards because there were several. And the third thing was getting them in time. So the price ranges anywhere from, on eBay I found a set for 1200 used, mm. all the way up to almost $3,000 for a set. So for just a short time, that's not practical. For maybe a whole winter, but we're not there. No. We're in warmer Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, only we're not supposed to be doing what we're doing. <laughs> Anyway, so that that's the air skirt option. You may want to look into those. Some RVs come with, or they can have installed, and this was another thing where there was a time factor, they will get snaps put on all the way around their RV, and then they snap on the vinyl all the way around their RV. I have no idea how much that costs. I couldn't find any information on that, but it usually has to be installed by an RV dealership, or you have to really know what you're doing to do it yourself and we didn't have the time and I'm sure it's very pricey for that as well. 
Another issue would be the storage again because it's heavier weight and it would take up quite a bit of room that we don't have. Right. Now, as before I go any further, I'm going to tell you that our solution costs less than $100 at roughly around $80, $85. So keep watching. <laughs> Another idea we saw were they used um, a very, very sticky adhesive with a hook on it. It was not a command strip. Command strips work pretty well. I've had one on my door to hang a wreath with or my Texas star or whatever throughout mm. the year. And I think I've only put two on in, in over five years because eventually they do wear off or fall off. But for the most part, they hold up really well. Unfortunately, we have an aluminum siding, and I don't think that, that would work going around the perimeter, but it does not leave any damage afterwards because you just peel off the, the sticky stuff and it, it's clean. Mm -hmm. it, they are really nice. But again, I think that would work better on, on fiberglass oh, yes. yeah. and not on our, in our situation. Or an Airstream. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. On an Airstream, yeah. it would work too. Uh, don't know how well they will hold with the weight of the vinyl and the wind. Mm -hmm. Don't know how well they would hold for that. So what somebody else did is they put up this really sticky adhesive and they put it on their RV. It had a hook on it. It was not the command strip. And when they went to take them <laughs> off, they did a lot of damage to the outside yeah. of their RV. So that's probably not a good recommendation. I saw that in a blog, and at, they did an update on it and said they kind of regretted doing that. All right, and the, the last one are hay bales. <laughs> uh, hay bales or plywood. Again, plywood would be a great op option if you have some place to store it afterwards or a use for it afterwards, which we don't. Mm -hmm. And the hay bales are not permitted here. Uh, they would be not permitted in a lot of places, but if you yeah. if you have your own land or your own property or something and you can get your hand on some hay bales, that works pretty well. Now we'll show you what we ended up doing, and uh, we'll show you all the pieces and parts that we got, and it's really not very complicated, but uh, it was a very good idea, and I think it's going to work well. well. Otherwise, we'll show you the bits and pieces all over the park. <laughs> 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 oh, please, no. <laughs> These are some of the supplies we got at um, Home Depot and at Walmart. Um, duct tape, just in case the other idea doesn't work out. We're hoping we don't have to use this because this could damage the paint on the RV. But worse comes to shove that you need to protect your home. This is the tarp. It's a heavy-duty tarp. It's 10, by, 10 feet by 16 feet. If we cut it in half that's 32 feet then in length um, we're looking at um, other ideas on this too but it's uh, tear and weather crack resistant heavy duty reinforced hems um, it's five millimeter thickness hyper tough and it's got the grommets and everything uh, we're hoping that this will work with Gary's idea of how to fasten this on the bottom this is Gary's idea when you think about tie, tie down things on a boat and how they wrap the, the, the rope around this back and forth and back and forth on a boat to tie it in place, he's going to put these underneath, attaching it to the wood frame and then uh, be able to wrap around that to secure it. He has several of them. I think he's got like eight of them. This is the rope we got. And it says lightweight and strong for camping, sports, outdoor activities. It's uh, 50 feet long. And it says 160 pounds. So we thought, well, that's that's got to be pretty strong. We're hoping. And then we got another windshield thing. These things are like less than $4, I think. So it was really cheap um, insulation. And compared to buying, Gary came back in, Hi. compared to buying uh, the Insultec, it was like $25 for 25 feet. So it was a dollar a foot where this is, we don't need all that. This will be just about right. 
And uh, he's planning on putting that. Oh, this place is such a mess. Um, he's planning on putting down there, um, underneath that closet. You can see the tub right there. You can see my laundry I'm getting ready to do. Um, underneath the tub are a lot of pipes and everything, but that's our, uh, that's a storage bay. And there's not a lot protecting the pipes and stuff down there. So he's going to put this down there as extra protection against the door. Correct. And then we're going to have... Can you clear some of that away? Some of the stuff that was in the way is our recycling that we still don't know where to take it. We've been here about seven weeks, eight weeks, and we still don't have any place to take our recycling. We can't find any place to take it. So it just keeps piling up. We have a... a a container outside that we're putting it all in as we gathered in the house here <sighs> anyway so he's got these holes drilled in there for circulation but then he also is planning on probably taking that completely off yeah I'll just six screws and just take it off and we'll put a fan that blows this way yeah so we have air circulating under there to keep that warm plus the insulation of this thing That's where it is and that's what the rope will go around to anchor and for the tarp to go around and now Gary got another idea here around the bumper probably shouldn't say anything until we know it works well I can always edit it out <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so I'm bringing the tarp around here and then I'll have the carabiner on and then I can just run the rope through here, another one over there and then around the corner. I think okay. it'll be good. All right. Sounds good to me. <laughs> First one tied on. We're gonna weigh it down. This will this part will curve under and we're gonna put all kinds of weight things on them so that they stay, but we wanted to be generous with how much was hanging down. Okay. Let's that on. <laughs> I'll show the finished project when it's done. And he's just tying just about everything. <laughs> Big, that big part will be keeping this um, from blowing under because if it blows under that's not going to do any good so we got to put weights underneath here to keep it in place. We talked about doing some sandbags possibly and then just get rid of the sand afterwards but we'll see. Either cut it along here or cut it along here so it fits. Yep. And then there's these that run right up alongside the inside. So I want to get it to go behind here. Yeah. So that they are protected. A okay. little better, yeah. Yep. Okay. That's the idea. All right. Hmm. This one has, uh, this little bay here has some tools and things, but it also has a uh, part of the fresh water tank is in back there. The water pump is back in there. And it goes through underneath the dinette to the other side where we have some uh, food and stuff stored. So he's insulating this with the other part that he cut off that when he did this one. Ready to open it, hope it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> so that's all insulated under there now, too, and protecting those pipes that are there. And we have enough 
for uh, one more small bay on the other side of the RV too where some tools and things are stored and other things but anyway this is this is gonna be great uh, less than four dollars we're able to, to insulate three bays it's getting dark so I hope you can see this uh, this is day one Hopefully everything is now in place and he can just finish up real quick tomorrow, getting the rest of it on. This is going to be where the brunt of the wind is going to hit is on this side and the back. So we wanted to make sure we got that done first in case something happened tomorrow. And we weren't able to finish it. Looking good. Now we just got the rest of this to get done tomorrow. And the hooks are already in place. Another thing you want to do when it's cold is to open the doors that go to your pipes and everything in your kitchen and in the bathroom. Just leave them open. This is the back window and there is a protection that goes over the window. There's this, but on the other is a cover that covers this window and that does shield us a little bit, but with the wind coming from that direction, we're just going to add this in here. This is just one of those um, things that goes on the on a windshield in your car to keep the hot sun out. But it goes all the way across, so it's going to cover the whole thing, which is great. And that will help to add a little extra insulation on that end. This is our Berkey water filtration system. It's awesome. It was a gift to us from some people. A church Gary served in Nevada. It was an awesome gift. Anyway, this is our Berkey, and we're filling it and running water through it today so we can have at least this one full, which is a gallon, and then we have another one that's going to be full, and then this. Probably overkill. Better to be safe than sorry. We don't know if pipes are going to freeze if uh, you know outside as far as the here at the park. So to just be on the safe side, we're going to have water on hand in case for some reason we don't have water here at the park to use. I've talked about these before. We just bought some foam and stuck it up in there. We've been using them for years. They work really well. They don't look so great, but they work. In a recent video, and this will also be in our playlist, we put plastic on the windows and it's a airtight, uh, I can't show it to you because it's clear. That's one of the nice things about it. But I have my hand on this and it is not cold at all. It, it is amazing how much it, it, it insulates. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. We brought some with us from Wisconsin because we couldn't find it back in 21 anywhere in Texas. Some more things that we're doing. We are, I am putting, uh, at the end of this video, I'm putting up a playlist that will have all the videos we've ever done. It seems like there's always something new, and this time the wind factor is mm -hmm. the big one. So we're, there's always something new that, that changes how we're going to protect our home in the winter. There's a lot to learn, and there's a lot of things, depending on your circumstance at the time. Cement, ground, uh, rain, ice, sleet, whatever, all those things are going to matter. Now, we do have a solar panel, which we don't know how that will work if the power goes out because if the high winds, and it is one of those briefcase ones that just sits on the ground, we could not use that in 2021 because of the ice and the snow. And this, clouds. And clouds. It yeah. was cloudy the whole time. So <clears throat> this time, if the wind isn't too bad, 
if we could figure out a play and, and we do lose power, we would have the solar backup. Uh, we do not have a generator. We've gotten by for almost six years with no generator. We um, have the truck. We can hook that up if we need to, and we can keep the batteries charged that way. If we can't use the solar, we have, we have different ideas of what we can do. Uh, you need electricity of some kind or the battery power to keep your refrigerator going, to keep your hot water heater kicking in, and your furnace. So those are all real important things when it's cold. You saw in the beginning of the video that we were topping off our propane. Again, that is in the event that we lose power, we the furnace will be kicking in a lot more, so we're going to need to have that. Otherwise, we're doing space heaters. Another backup for heat is our Mr. Buddy heater. This is our Mr. Buddy. We've used this when we've done boondocking. You have an actual flame that will come in here. You just um, hook up one of those little green... Um, propane cylinders mm -hmm. under here and then um, and then you have to ignite it and then it really kicks out a lot of heat it's our little fireplace yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you but you have to have a window cracked open or something when you're using it for uh, ventilation because it is propane and it's a light and it's a flame yep. carbon monoxide concerns you do need to have a window or something cracked somewhere but Hopefully we won't have to use that this time. We're going to drain the gray and black tank tonight. It is Wednesday night. We're going to we're going to dump mm -hmm. that. We're going to dump those right away. We're going to be putting some RV antifreeze in. It is uh, burst protection up to 50 below. Good Lord, I hope we don't get that cold. But this is safe for RV pipes and everything too. It's not something like you would do for a car. Make sure you get the RV antifreeze. The fresh water tank will be filled, and we'll probably gather some more, maybe a five gallon container of extra water just in case, so that we don't have to hook the hose back up to fill the fresh water if we get low. We don't know how long we are going to go without having to be able to hook up to the city water. So, just having a little extra on hand, and we're going to conserve like crazy. <laughs> We're not going to drain the hot water heater at this time unless we lose power. If we lose power, we will have to drain it because you do not want to have a frozen ice block for your hot water heater. That would not be good. We know several people here in the park that have heated water hoses, and they seem to be taking a lot of confidence in that. As long as you have electricity, they'll work. But the other concern we have at this particular park is how high the water spigots go. They go about two and a half, three, almost three feet high above ground and they are not wrapped with anything. So we're a little concerned about that. We've talked to the owners about it. They're, they're fairly new at this. Um, we've told them our concerns. The manager has talked to them about it, hoping it's not going to be an issue. But just in case we would have pipes bursting or something or water be a problem, you're going to want to have fresh water on hand, and that electric water hose is not going to help you. I'm sorry if this seems a little discombobbled. We, uh, I'm just really trying to get this done so I can get it edited and get it up yet today because tomorrow is when the big storm hits, and some of you may still be looking for some solutions, and you don't have a lot of money to spend on, on it, and you want something simple, fairly simple, to um, put up. We're going to let you know how everything ended up working for us afterwards with a follow-up video. So make sure you're subscribed to our channel if you aren't yet. And uh, ring the bell so you get notified every time new videos come up. Check out our Facebook page for other features and things that we put up. And we may be doing some updates and um, maybe hour to hour of what's happening here. Uh, I, that's what we did in 21. We kept some people up to date more um real time on Facebook. So you might want to be checking that out too. And until next time, hope you're staying warm and cozy and everything goes well. God bless. God bless.